Boke Tov. I heard a Boke Or. That made me very happy. Good morning. It's great to be back home to this important institution so loved by my late grandfather Barnet and my late father Greville. Zichronam Livracha. May their memory be a blessing. And I'm so proud to say that they loved being presidents of the board. They cherished this word in our household. The board were words of kavod, and that's what I have in my heart. And I know that my father would applaud our brave president, Marie van der Zyl, when she told me firmly that what matters is that no Jew should feel isolated due to their affiliation or views, and we all have to respect each other. That is a wonderful principle. <laughs> That's great. That was my brief, and I think it's a wonderful one for this speech. It's been a week of promises, of manifestos, red, blue, yellow, and green, and also an excellent one from the board itself, reflecting the high quality of the team led by its astute, charismatic, and principled Gillian Merrin. I'm going to clap that. <laughs> My rabbinic and cantorial colleagues have also just uh, um, produced a voting guide, not who to vote for, but about issues so that our right, our imperative to vote, will think about particular issues democracy, polarization, climate crisis, refugees, racism, intolerance, LGBT+, Israel, Palestine, to name a few. And Judaism has a manifesto for ourselves, for our city, for our country and the world. Judaism's manifesto is l'taken olam b'malchut shaddai, to impact the world in partnership with the creator of all life. And this is our role as Jewish citizens, to be active, to make our views heard and impact on public debate, to ensure that this fantastic country benefits from all that it has to offer, and all that our community has to offer. We should be so proud of ourselves as Jews, as confident and contributing British citizens. Our manifestos all have one element in common. They ask others how to act in certain ways. But we know that the best relationships, like covenants, are mutual. And our community needs to ask, what must we do how must we act to each other so we can preserve our religious civilization and the, the community that we love for future generations? So I believe there are a clear set of issues, a form of manifesto for all of us, which is certainly not party specific. I call this a Derech Eretz manifesto, a manifesto of good old Derech Eretz of acting properly, courteously, restoring dignity and restoring Derech Eretz to ourselves and to Britain. Because we know that Derech Eretz, the way of the world, manners, Kadma le Torah, comes before Torah, how we act. And we cannot lead a Jewish life, however we define Torah, without proper manners without treating each other correctly and decently. So the first part of a cross-communal Derech Eretz Manifesto is accountability. Accountability for how we talk and how we act with each other. Accountability means being able to answer for what we say in person or online, having to answer for how we act. I'm concerned that as a community, we've swapped the beauty of nuance for purial put down, critique for insult, and the benefit of the doubt for the worst possible interpretation. Where, when you need it, is the wisdom of the Mishnaic statement, 
that we always have to judge the other favorably. Now we need this. And instead of attacking when you disagree, the Derech Eretz way is to turn the attack into a question, assuming good intention. And the best example, I feel, of ill intent that we seem to have lost, the skill of being able to have sensible discussions about Israel. We prejudge intentions, we insult. We find it hard to acknowledge the truth on the other side of the argument, whichever side, and we label our fellow Jews, our brothers and sisters, as traitors. This is not Derech Eretz. We even stoop to challenge the Jewishness of those with whom we disagree. This has to stop. When we do this, we drive people away. We drive away young people who feel that their well-being is threatened by the public Jewish debate, rather than challenged or inspired or nurtured by it. What does it look like to have a community of Derech Eretz in which we proactively nourish our diversity? It means that it's accepting that at Kiddush, or funerals, shivers, when we sit at the Board of Deputies, we sit with people whose views we really might not like. It doesn't mean we have to be comfortable. It's not meant to be comfortable community. Derek Eretz isn't about comfort. It's the opposite. It's about living with the discomfort, but without dumping our discomfort, our fears, our anger on other people. Derek Eretz is living honorably with those we disagree and giving others the benefit of the doubt. It's no chokhmah, no wisdom, to behave properly to others with whom you agree. It's easy. The challenge, the mitzvah, is holding yourself back. Don't write it. Don't say it. Assume good intentions. Ask a question. Why do you think that? It'll transform our lives. We can hasten, hasten the Messiah. We can then return to the golden Jewish capacity of machloket l'shem shemaim, disagreements for the sake of heaven. It is derech eretz to be very careful how we respond when we're anxious, as fears and angers tend to clash with wise, considered behavior. One of our raw fears is of rising anti-Semitism. So how do we respond with care and effectiveness we can't just demand, stamp it out. It's too primitive. Yet it expresses that primitive thing that we feel. It releases adrenaline and anger and fear, but it is not a plan. We can't stamp our feet and expect racism to disappear. What could be a response of Derek Eretz? Open our doors. Just when we want to turn inwards and close our doors and our hearts out of fear, that's exactly the moment we have to open doors to others. Think of Seder, the very moment of our vulnerability when we're really angry, when we justifiably think of history and we say, Pour out your wrath on the nations. What do we do? We open the front door just when we feel vulnerable. So at the moment when we feel unsafe, open the door. A communal manifesto of Derek Eretz is to hold back our strong impulses and instead open our door. Invite in people we don't know or we don't know yet. Invite in teachers, politicians, local councillors, neighbours, and yes, specifically, Dafka, those with whom we disagree, so that we can change their minds, or even have our minds changed. We tackle anti-Semitism by being precise in our interventions and by opening up conversations with those who don't yet know Jews. 
The Institute for Jewish Policy Research stresses that there's a difference between an anti-Semite and someone who perhaps inadvertently holds anti-Semitic views. We need, we must challenge anti-Semitism with practical solutions and give such people a ladder to climb down. I don't want us to be a community defined by what we're opposed to, or even worse, defined by the hate directed at us. We must continue unapologetically to fulfill our duty and engage with and influence wider society for the better. As important actors here, our deputies, I urge you to reject fortress Judaism. We must not put ourselves back in the ghetto. For instance, I'm proud that we live in a country that has legal same marriage, or what we could call equal marriage. The welfare of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans plus people particularly means a lot to me as a rabbi, as an ally, and as a parent. And this year, the government has been discussing Relationship and Sex Education, or RSE. All primary children will learn that not everyone lives in what used to be called a traditional family. Sometimes it's mum and mummy, or ima and ima. Sometimes it's that parents don't live with each other. A Derech Eretz agenda would support this, must support those relationships and sex education guidelines that ensure that from an early age, children will hear that there are many ways that we build families. RSC doesn't attempt to encourage or persuade. And we know that mental health issues are more prevalent amongst the LGBT plus community, and that acceptance is one of the steps that we can take to improve this. This is especially true as the rise in hate crime is far more directed to lesbians and gays and bisexuals, and then even more to trans people, than to Jews or Muslims. We must be allies to others. This is the core of Derech Eretz, standing alongside others. And this may be uncomfortable for some in our community, and we've seen lobbying against relationship and sex education from a few ultra-Orthodox communities, suggesting that relationship and sex education proposals are an infringement on religious freedom. And astonishingly, from just one rabbi, I'm happy to say, just one, who stated that Jews should even give up their lives before submitting to the new guidelines. It's important because it's not just Jews who believe kol Yisrael arvim zeh bezeh. It's not just Jews who see us, not just Jews who see each other as responsible, but the rest of the world sees us. And this story was covered by the BBC under the headline, LGBT teaching, an abomination, Jewish judge says, which could be you or me or you or you. It pains me that people who are not Jewish will not distinguish between this outlying view and the rest of our community, which paradoxically has been shown by statistics in the country to be more liberal on LGBT issues than the majority of the country. You, our board deputies, are in a unique position to clarify that most Jews consider this an extreme and extraordinary intervention. Our, Jew, our Derek Eretz manifesto must commit us to working together and being seen to work together and lead together. Yes, it's an improvement that we've stopped criticizing different mainstream Jewish movements in public. But if that is the only way that we can manage Derek Eretz, then the bar of decency, of cross-communal collaboration, is horrendously low. I believe that Derech Eretz demands of us as a community that we proactively, transparently collaborate on issues like interfaith and housing, the environment, the future impact of artificial intelligence on our communities and society as a whole. 
We have to have open conversations where no professional or layperson is banned from appearing in public with another, just in case, chas v'chalila, God forbid, this is seen as some kind of approval of the other. This is disgraceful to ban each other. This is continuing. This is anglo -Jury's, Jury's version of Emperor's New Clothes. Everyone knows it. They're professionals, leaders, rabbis who are forbidden to teach together, debate together, or even be photographed for last week's wonderful mitzvah day together. But we don't say it aloud. But now we have to. Now we have to sit together because the issues are crucial. Whether Holocaust, anti-Semitism, Israel, interfaith, racism, or the fact that our community is funded by just a few, about a hundred astonishingly generous philanthropists, but that the next generation is not picking up the baton of Tzedakah in the same way. We have to do this together. These are not religious issues. These fall within the now moribund 1998 Stanmore Accords the cross-communal agreement about how all denominations should work together. Looking up at it with integrity and decency for the good of the community and not downwards at our parochial, territorial concerns. Those are not Derek Eretz. And we need you, our deputies, to hold us all into account so that we will work together for the good of our community as, as a whole this is where our conversation must be. The solutions lie working in unity, accepting our differences and pooling our talents. When we agree, let's plan together. And when we disagree, let's say it and let's lay a foundation for constructive disagreements for the sake of heaven, for the sake of our precious community. I've learned loads recently from a project that I'm involved in called Real Conversations which teaches that Jews and Muslims who live in high area, areas of high segregation, it teaches Jews and Muslims the skills of having those difficult, awkward, uncomfortable conversations. Participants began to see, begin to see disagreements as opportunities which deepen relationships and not moments where relationships fall apart. We call it turning a difficult conversation into a real conversation. It's time to have more real conversations where we disagree constructively and strengthen the fraying bonds within our own community. This is Derech Eretz. It's not Derech Eretz to avoid, deride, diminish, or prohibit conversations. This is simply not Jewish. I may totally disagree with those in our community who, for example, do not believe in a two-state solution, However, it is their right to say it and for us to have a jolly good row. Your, pres your president's insistence that no Jew must feel isolated due to our affiliation or views has to be our guiding principle, not just for the board, but, our, but our, for our community as a whole. Ken Yehi Ratzon. May this be God's will. Thank you.